I'd like to call the meeting to order uh, the District of Chatwin, and we'd like the opening statement read, please. As we begin our meeting this evening, we reflect on the service we provide to our citizens, and we will endeavor to conduct our business effectively and productively on their behalves. Thank you. On the adoption of the agenda, I have uh, one uh, request from council, or to council, that uh, two delegations have, uh, have opted out for today's uh, delegation presentations. So I would like to, we have one, dele uh, one uh, report, CR4 Administrator's Report by Desiree LeBlanc, and I w wouldn't mind if we move that up to uh, delegations, if somebody would make that. I can make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Carried. Okay, so that's one. And uh, any new business for the agenda? Yes, I'd like to add the topic of COVID-19, please. Okay. Any more uh, new business? Okay, adoption of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Carried. Okay, minutes. Of the meeting, March 2nd, 2020. Motion to adopt. Accept. We're accepting minutes, right? Okay. All those in favor? I guess I should ask, anybody have any questions on March 20, March 2nd, first, prior to uh, the question? Okay, question. All those in favor? Carried. Okay, we will, uh, as the agenda has been amended, Desiree, if you don't mind taking the podium. There we go. <laughs> okay. No, you're okay. Is that better? Hey, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, and thanks for having me. I'm Desiree LeBlanc. I'm the manager of engineering and public works slash project manager, and today I'll be talking to you about the engineering department um, and the projects we have on the go right now. All right. Where do I point this? At the screen? <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Okay, um, the presentation will cover a quick introduction of who I am, the goals and objectives of the engineering department, the 2020 capital and planning projects, and then we'll have time for your questions. So, since I'm relatively new to Chetwind, I thought I'd quickly introduce myself. I grew up in Fort St. John, and I took a Bachelor of Applied Science in Environmental Engineering at UNBC in Prince George and UBC in Vancouver. I have two main hobbies. The first is running. Here I am crossing the finish line at the Mount Robson Ultra Marathon last fall. And I think I'll be sticking with half marathons from now on. Uh, my other hobby is snowboarding. And here I am at the top of Powder King. OK, now into engineering. In one sentence, the goal of the engineering department is really to ensure residents have sufficient access to the services they depend on every day. This involves upgrading old infrastructure, adding new infrastructure when needed, and developing appropriate plans for upgrades and maintenance of the water, sewer, storm systems, as well as our roads and sidewalks. We work to prioritize and scope the projects so that they can be done in the most cost-effective manner, and we're improving how we approach that, which I'll talk more about later. The projects we have on the go for 2020 include capital upgrades, a sewer replacement project, construction of debris barriers and sediment traps, a paving program, and building and site upgrades. For planning and design, we are working on updating our water master plan, 
improving our asset management practice, implementing oh, our new official community plan bylaw, implementing the action items from our vulnerability assessment, improving our water and sewer maintenance planning, and the downtown lighting design, as well as the North Sanitary Trunk Main um, Centurion Creek Crossing design. On to capital upgrades. Our sewer replacement, here I'm just going to. Our sewer replacement project this year includes upgrading the sanitary sewer on two streets that were selected due to the age of the infrastructure and the level of maintenance they require by our crew to keep sewer flowing, such as flushing out debris and blockages and repairing service lines. The project was identified in our 10-year infrastructure renewal program that was prepared in 2016 by Urban Systems. Um, and it was tendered in 2019, but prices came in higher than we budgeted for that project and for, for, the, for the 47th Ave project. So this one was put on hold until 2020. We've reached out to the low bidder from last year to see if they'll honor their pricing. And we have verbal confirmation that they will, but we're just in the process of finalizing the numbers. So the project is on queue for this year, but we're waiting to see council approval until pricing is finalized, which will likely happen before the next council meeting. Uh, the upgrades on 53rd place Northwest include 250 meters of new sanitary main, um, upsizing the existing main from six inches to eight inches to alleviate some capacity issues. And we will be reusing the manhole since a condition assessment determined that they're um, suitable for reuse. The sewer replacement project on 51st Ave Southwest by Tim Hortons includes the construction of 280 meters of new sanitary main and four new manholes. Um, and we'll be inspecting the service lines in the field during construction to see if they can be reused. Uh, construction is anticipated to begin May 15th but that will be pending the approval of council and award of the contract. The debris barriers and sediment traps project um, includes the installation of a debris fence like the one shown on the right um, and sediment traps upstream of the debris barriers. The purpose of the debris fence is to uh, reduce the amount of woody debris and to a lesser extent gravel and large rocks from being transported from upper areas of the watershed down through town where it has the potential to block culverts and bridges and lead to flooding that we've most recently seen in 2016 and 2011. Um, we've been working with our geotechnical engineer to select the best locations for this type of infrastructure. Originally, we had intended to construct the debris barriers across both Windrum and Widmark Creeks, but on further study, our geotechnical engineer determined that the potential for material transport from Widmark Creek was not substantial enough to warrant um, the construction of a debris fence, uh, which would then have to be maintained for years to come. Let's see here. Our goal is to tender the project in May and construct in July and August. So here you can see what our geotechnical engineer has proposed in a preliminary sketch. The debris barrier is shown in red and the, the sediment trap will be constructed upstream. It's located at the north area of the gun range. Uh, also shown, you can see there's some channel armoring as well as a berm that's shown in yellow. Uh, but they'll be finalizing their design and providing uh, construction drawings and uh, tender package. So one of the main challenges impacting this project has been getting the environmental approvals and permits that we need. Um, it's been a lengthy process, but we're nearing the end of it and uh, we should be ready for this year. Our paving program in 2020, we are focusing on upgrading some of our gravel roads to asphalt. Uh, this will include Westgate Road from the, well, just past the highway up past the cemetery. Uh, then we will focus on Nicholson Road, the Nicholson Road approach to Highway 29, that's still gravel, shown on the bottom right. And if we have the budget, uh, we will also pay 51A place northeast in the rodeo subdivision. Okay. 
So some of the smaller projects we're completing this year include cleaning our clear wells at the high lift pump station and water treatment plant and installing, well, replacing the fencing around the wastewater treatment lagoons and installing new fencing around the overflow pond at the lift station. Uh, we'll be painting the low lift pump station building shown on the top there with its paint chipping um, and replacing the eaves troughs at the water treatment plant building. We are hoping that some of these projects will come in under budget and if they do, we hope to reallocate those funds to cover the costs of the um, uh, updating our aerial photography. So we're just in the process of soliciting quotes from qualified contractors. Planning and design. The water master plan update is a continuation of our water master plan phase one that was completed in 2013. Uh, the primary objectives are to summarize existing and future system demands, update the water model, and add the infrastructure that's been installed since it was developed. That will include adding our pressure reducing stations and our water treatment plant equipment and the pumps and electrical equipment at our high lift pump station. Once we've updated the model, we'll be able to use it to uh, assess the operating conditions at our pressure reducing stations and their interaction with our reservoirs um, and uh, we'll be able to check for check fire flow availability at various places around town. This will then be compiled into a report of all of the findings and uh, any recommendations that might result. One of our main goals this year is to improve our asset management practice. As I mentioned earlier, we have taken steps in this direction, partly in the preparation of our 10-year infrastructure renewal program that was developed in 2016, and in the various reports and assessments of our roads, water system, and sewer system, but there's room for improvement. Asset management is becoming a higher priority for many communities in recent years. As we face aging infrastructure and the continued need for reliable services, we also need a more systematic approach to effectively maintain, renew, and expand, expand our built infrastructure. From the asset management framework developed by Asset Management BC, asset management is an integrated process bringing together skills, expertise, and activities of people with information about a community's physical assets and finances so that, so that informed decisions can be made supporting sustainable service delivery. Right now, we are on the assess phase, which can be broken down as shown here. The first step is taking stock of our existing assets and developing an inventory with the information we have. We've done this for our water system assets so far by building on our existing GIS that stores information about the physical location of our water mains and updating it to include installation year, material, and size of each pipe. We have also created a list of our other water system assets, such as the water treatment plant and high lift pump station, to name two, um, and populating that list with the year of construction and asset category. From that point, we estimate the current value of the assets using current and recent construction prices as well as historical ones. We predict the replacement timing based on the material type or category and its corresponding expected service life. And finally, we assess expenditure requirements by compiling the information. Next, we plan on doing this for our sanitary sewer system, our storm system, and our roads and sidewalks. Um, after that, we'll look at our remaining assets such as buildings, vehicles, and equipment, along with maintenance planning. It's a large undertaking, but once we've developed an initial inventory um, and prepared a baseline asset management plan, we'll have a useful tool for, for long-term planning uh, that we can update on a regular basis. Um, as a, here's a quick example of some of the information generated in the assess phase of the process, uh, for water mains anyway. Um, so here on the left you can see 51% of our water mains are PVC. And on the right, you can see that I believe it's 19% of our water mains should be replaced in the next five years um, as they'll be reaching the end of their expected service life. But keep in mind that 
these are just estimates, and we also consider the condition of the assets as well as funding available for their replacement. Ooh. All right. The vulnerability assessment report was finalized in November of 2019 and prepared over a year-long process led by Shift Collaborative. It began with a climate projection study for northeastern BC, which provided us with regional information on climate projections, precipitation and temperature indicators, and hydrology for selected river catchments for the 2050s and 2080s. Then the team conducted community scoping reports to identify priority climate change impacts and identified gaps and opportunities to address climate change conditions. The vulnerability assessment report compiled the information with the, with the addition of risk assessments specific to Chetwind and provided initial action ideas as well as a detailed action plan. The vulnerability assessment action items will be incorporated into the district's planning for future projects, including enhancing preparedness for wildfire, increased frequency and, pre increased frequency and intensity of precipitation, flooding, and by including objectives in our asset management planning and the official community plan which we are updating this year with Urban Systems. We will be seeking extensive public engagement to ensure the new OCP best supports the community's priorities with the first public engagement session currently scheduled for April 15th, though I guess that might change depending on recommendations by our health officials. Um, for other planning and design projects, we are working on further developing our water and sewer maintenance planning, which falls under the asset management umbrella. Uh, design for the downtown lighting project is currently underway and includes ornamental street lighting along 51st Street, 49th Ave, and 48th Ave. We're just waiting on the design drawings and tender documents and estimates for the construction to see when we'll be able to complete the work and how we can phase it in. Uh, finally, we're working on the design of the North Sanitary Trunk Main where it crosses Centurion Creek. We have submitted a grant application in February for the construction of the project, but will continue into detailed design over the summer, which will include a sanitary sewer flow monitoring study that we're going to be doing in-house. And that is the end of my presentation, and I have some time for your questions. Councillors? Thank you for that. Um, with a lot of information in that, because it looks like you have a lot of work yep. coming up. Um, one question I do have for you, you're looking at doing some paving. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the, on, up the high, Nicholson Road up to Highway 29. With, uh, do you think you put asphalt on that? Is that going to take away the frost seams that we get there every year, or is that just going to make the asphalt from? Because it gets really bad there in Washington. I imagine that they will just be asphalt covered frost heaves, but um, I would have to look into that more. And Al if Alex could maybe speak to that a bit more, he's working on the asphalt. <laughs> so the base is pretty good. So we're hoping we're just gonna have to go down maybe six inches, maybe 12 inches, gravel it and then pave it. And hopefully that should take care of any potential frost heaves. Okay. Cause but there's, there's yeah, there's no guarantee though. Yeah, so there. that's a thinking. <laughs> Just one question for the Alex. So when you do that, will there, if you come back to us saying that you need to do something that then you find like anytime you dig anywhere to do anything, you always think digging up bones, right? So <laughs> just to say the least about stuff. Uh, do you have uh, management for uh, let's say, uh, funds for something like that? Do you have that in your uh, plan, Desiree? Sorry. Like if, if you find something you have to go and fix that's a little bit bigger than the project, do we always have something in our uh, budget to uh, be able to fix that or do we have to come back to council to fix that? It would depend on how big the find is. But okay, but you have some, usually. I can work with Kevin and go to Okay. Yeah, because we don't want things to stall in the middle of the project and say we can only go so far. Yep. I just have a quick question about the uh, slide 17, the materials, um, the two big materials, PVC and what's AC? 
Um, that's asbestos cement. Okay. That's a concrete pipe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just, uh, we're going to be collaborating with the engineering firm out of Fort St. John again. What was their name again? Uh, Urban Systems? Yeah, what were, what were we doing with them? I didn't quite catch that. The official community plan, we're working on them with. Uh, they're also helping out with the debris barriers project. They're going to be doing the design for the sediment traps. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my question was uh, on that, and uh, what my question was, when you say it's down by the gun range, how far is that from uh, the boundary, or is that our boundary? Um, it's within the gun range. Okay, so we're, we're pretty close there, right? Is it right across from the gun range? Because if people don't know where the gun range is, it's just on the side of Mount Baldy, right? On the left side, looking at it from north. Yes. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I was just wondering if it was within our boundaries. So it has to it be is. in for us to, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know Ke uh, Alex and uh, Clay and the rest of the council that have been on council for a little bit, I'm not saying that Clay is old, but uh, uh, we have an issue with not an issue, but uh, we're going to be looking down the road to fix one of our major uh, uh, residential areas. Uh, have you been notified, or is uh, Crown Sub, right, yeah. Alex? Crown yep. So uh, I was just wondering, because it's always on our mind, and if we start thinking about it now, uh, Council and uh, yourself, Desiree and Alex, that I know council is going to have a decision to make in the next little while on if the project's going to go or if we're going to have to get uh, some sort of, um, I guess, cash flow going to make sure that we can uh, do this job because it's it's a big one uh, okay. of what I heard. So I'm just making clear, making sure that everybody's clear that we need to. Uh, at least have it in the back burner and uh, make sure it does, doesn't go out there and we need to be able to do that in the future. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. uh, does it apply right about the purpose and after the Yeah, and just part of a, a bigger picture on that, you brought up the the ten year infrastructural uh, revitalization plan uh, last year when the quotes came in far higher than what we were expecting. We had talked about plugging in new numbers, more realistic numbers into that that ten year that ten year plan. Has that kind of been started? And and yeah, it's, it's a pretty quick process. I did quickly type in some of an updated unit rates list, um, mm -hmm. and. Yes, pretty much everything almost doubled. Um, right. But... Uh, so now we have a 20-year plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I, what I could do is prepare a more detailed cost estimate for each of those projects. There aren't too many of them because the, the unit prices that were used in the original plan, they they just... As, the restoration costs were quite low because they just assumed that we would you know, dig a trench that's as narrow as possible and then patch it with a small asphalt patch. But what we ended up doing on 47th Ave, for instance, is a full road reconstruction. Um, so what we could do is look at refining the project scope for the ones that were identified on that 10-year plan um, and we can develop some more realistic cost estimates. Okay, and maybe it would be kind of time for a committee the whole meeting. I remember when we did that the first time, it was about a three or four hour meeting with lots of maps and, and stuff that we can expect to fail and, and stuff, you know, uh, green, yellow, and red, you know, very dangerous and, and mild and, and, and okay, mm -hmm. and maybe come up with something like that. And maybe when it comes to something like the, the crown sub, maybe it's a little bit more than just repl uh, repairing and replace. Maybe we want to look at sidewalks um, and, and other upgrades like that when it comes down to it. Maybe have some different options. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Any more questions for Desiree? Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. Okay, moving on, we'll uh, go to bylaws. Uh, B1, District of Chetwin, bylaw number 1112-2020. Make a recommendation to final adoption. Second. Good, seconder. Any questions? Yeah, the, the, uh, Go with staff. Yep. Kevin can tell us. <laughs> yeah, the, the tipping charges are included in those rates. We haven't got the the ability to weigh an individual container to be able to charge a tipping fee to an individual customer, so it's built into those rates. Question? Laura? Okay, not seeing any on the motion. All those in favor? Okay, right. Uh, B2, District of Chetwin bylaw number 1113-2020. Motion to adopt. Discussion. Okay, I got one. Good. I just okay. have one Go question. Ahead, okay, in regards to the water fees, we've we've set up a um, uh, we have a allocation of monies every year for say a, a loader or a pickup. Do we allocate money every year to to a to the uh, water treatment plant? Where so when the when the time comes to replace that, we don't have a, a like a huge huge shot of money to pay on that, or do we? Or we just do we just go out and look for um, grants and and then kick in whatever's needed. Well, with regards to the equipment, it is allocated out on an hourly basis on whatever function it's used within the within the district. So if they're using a loader for something in the the water system, the water system gets charged for it. That pays to the reserve. We don't actually have a similar system related to water lines and sewer lines. We have, you know, some other methods by which we fund some of those, PRA being one of them obviously, and some other strategies we're slowly working toward that uh, will become a lot bigger over the next little while as the asset management and all the rest of it gets front and center. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? Okay, all those in favor? Okay, carry. B3, District of Chetwin bylaw number 1114-2020. Discussion? Questions? Not seeing any. All those in favor? Carried. B4, 
Before District of Chetwin Bylaw Number One One Zero Nine Twenty Twenty. Okay, 2020. So I have a question. Yes, so go ahead. You're asking, looking, we're looking to mm -hmm. third and adoption on this. Okay, yes. uh, I'll make that recommendation, the third reading and adoption. Fair. Okay, discussion. Okay. Yes, okay. Laura. So I, I just want to confirm this is what they have there right now. They're going to be using it for the same thing that they've been using for the last that is what he is asking for this, not the company that's using it, right? Go ahead, Steph. That's correct. He's, the subcontractor is still using his property probably for the next few months, but he doesn't, he, in speaking with him, he doesn't have any plans to continue on with the temporary storage of fuel after that. However, he can't operate without this rezoning because his TUP has expired. Right, so, so nothing has changed. Everything's just going to continue on just under a different name, more or less, right? That is for the company. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Clay. Go ahead. Uh, so it's a, a short term use then? Like a three, two months or three months or. Uh, is there a defined okay. date? Go ahead, Steph. Well, this uh, rezoning will make it. Part, permanently part of his rezoning, part of his zone, so that he could have it forever with these parameters that we've described. But it makes it permanent. But but not in all highway commercial zones, just in this one, site specific. I just have a concern with this being permanent now. This sounds like something that's going to come up and haunt a, a future council that they're going to have to be going back 12 years ago trying to figure out why we did what we did when we did it. Um, I, I would be more apt for a, for a zoning change or rezoning or something like that. I, I have a hard time making special exemptions for certain pieces of land that are, that are already zoned something else. I, I think I I think I have to be against this one. Yeah, we've we've run into that before where there's been a, exemptions. I was just just curious. Sorry, um, they've had these temporary tanks for six months now, give or take. How long is that, Ellen? Sorry, actually, it's six years. Oh, so you can do for three and then go for three. Okay. Yep. Okay, I, I guess I'm just... Because um, he's looking in the future of building a gas station there anyhow, right? Is he not? So would these tanks not be for that purpose in the future? Like, no? No, these are too small. They're, they're just a, a small temporary storage. And um, if he's uh, intending to build a gas station, he hasn't applied for that yet, although it is yeah. uh, permitted in, in his zoning. Right, yeah. So, but he couldn't really use these for fueling, um, you know, a lot of vehicles like a service station would. Any, any more? I guess yes. I just have one. I, I guess I'm just thinking, like, I'm, because they're, um, the company right now that is doing the pipeline is the one that is stationed there. I'm, I'm just wondering what it's going to look like if we don't allow this to go. Then what happens? Because it's been there six years now, so another three months, four months? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just curious what that would look like for them. Yes. And we got you're asking about our bylaws <clears throat> I will give it to Carol but when you go already one and we've already uh, given the, that one to go six years uh, Carol unfortunately it's not up to us that's actually in the local government act that they cannot have another extension Clay 
And, and when we went down this process, they knew the timeline of this. They, they knew how long they would have to complete the job, and they knew how long they would have to store fuel. And, and if it's only for another three or four months, they should be able to obtain fuel somewhere else. Uh, my concern is that in the future, there will always be um, something saying that on that piece of land, you can have a temporary fuel storage, a, a temporary tank, which definitely isn't as secured and environmentally sound as, as permanent structures. So I, that's, that's my concern on this. And we had from the public hearing that it says I could uh, get a thousand liters to them without concern, right? And that was from the public hearing. Janet, did you have something? So today, um, we need to uh, adopt this. Can we, before it's adopted, can we take some time and get some further information? Carol? Unfortunately, not unless we had another public hearing. We could, but we would just have to uh, arrange another public hearing because all the whole community has to have the opportunity to provide input and hear the same information. And what would it take to get a public hearing? We would just have to re-advertise and reschedule a public hearing. And what would we do with our uh, motion right now? Well, we could uh, just withdraw it or defeat it and uh, leave the bylaw at second reading. The bylaw's already been given two readings. Yes. So it could just stay there until we scheduled another public hearing, if you like. Clay. Uh, just two questions. Uh, yep. First of all, um, when does this temporary use permit expire? And second of all, what additional information are we looking to, to gain or, or what? Mm -hmm. maybe, first, maybe it's already here. Yeah, let's see. We'll, we'll deal with the first question first. When does that uh, temporary end? Oh, sorry. I, uh, believe, I believe it's very close. Um, I, when we pulled the application, and it's not something that sits on our level either because we thought that, um, I thought it was October actually, but it's soon. Um, we did advertise. We have gone through the notice of, uh, for feedback in regards to the process for the public hearing. I can't remember the second part of that question. Uh, I was just wondering what it was we were hoping to find out, what, in, what additional information that we're looking for. I think it would be uh, Councillor Work. Yeah, just because at that location right now, I mean, it's significantly less act activity today than it was, say, two weeks ago. So, you know, how necessary is this, uh, this request? I guess that's kind of redundant if the request has been made. Thank you. All right, any more questions on this? I just have the, from, from the public hearing, and uh, when we have a public hearing, it is for the public to come forward, give us their response to this, and uh, one of them was, uh, was for, and the other one was against, right? And the one against, in my position, was that 1,000 uh, liters they could get just about anywhere according to uh, the owner uh, of the bulk station, right? So with that uh, in mind, we, uh, we hold public hearings to hear this kind of stuff. That's why we, hear, we hold public hearings. So any more on this, uh, any more discussion? Okay, we're on the adoption mode. Okay, one more, okay. Sorry. Visually speaking, a thousand gallon tank is. We will correct you, leader. Yes. Visually, can somebody give me an example? Clay, please. I think the average tidy tank in the back of a pickup truck is about 450. So you get three of those. Two of those. Two of those? 450, 500, yeah. If I got two of those, they wouldn't need one of those. Laura? I think the reason that they're wanting it there for that location is just because that's where the company is set up. And once the pipeline starts up again, I, I think it's just, I think it's handy for them to have it there. I think that's why. Because that's where all of their business is, right? Yeah. Clay? 
And, and for me, it's not really a matter of a, it's going to be a disruption to, to a business and or it's not. I really don't know. That's not really for up to us to decide. Um, our concern is zoning. And we have a procedure and we have a, a temporary permit procedure. And and I've made mistakes before with zoning. And I uh, I just see this one as, as a mistake. We don't make special circumstances to individual parcels of land. And that's just where my position is on it. It's not a matter of what it looks like or how much it is. It's just zoning and procedures. OK, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor of the bylaw? One. All those opposed? Okay, the bylaws defeated. All right. Committee reports. Any uh, committee reports? Clay? I attended the BC Hydro uh, Go Fund meeting, and it's a, it's a pool of money that's uh, distributed uh, X amount every every year, and uh, Kirk and Chetman um, did receive seventy five hundred dollars for the. Surface North, which has now been postponed, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it it, uh, it will happen again, and we um, received that. And there was uh, other grants passed out, uh, three three different grants in there in the public um, on the BC Hydro um, page. But it's a it's a good fund and a good organization, and, and the money goes to good community building initiatives. And Mel? One thing I in the piece of the regional district, so basically meeting uh, some of the issues that are available to the model. We're going to have a gas collection system uh, in the uh, North East Landfill, which is Fort St. John. We're currently looking for things to sell us uh, renewable energy there. We're having a bit of a tough time with it because of all the whole concern. One question, well, not a question, but uh, uh, when we uh, deal with it at the PRRD, I have a seat on the, on the PRRD, it is one of our biggest expenses is solid waste. So uh, when Mel and uh, the other uh, directors that go to the uh, Peace of a Regional Solid Waste Committee, they are dealing with quite a, quite a handful. So with due respect, uh, I'd like to thank Mel for dealing with this stuff for the last year and a half and uh, they deal with quite a big budget because uh, all our stuff that we do put through our waste is dealt with uh, with them. So thank you, Mel. Clay? I'm glad you brought that up. I wanted to bring that up too. I remember it was a few years back when the uh, Solid Waste Committee was formed and Mel got onto it uh, right off the bat and he's been on it ever since. And I personally couldn't imagine a dollar more boring meeting. I don't think I could ever handle it. It is such a grind, but you go to UBCM and the meetings, and it's probably one of the most, if not the most important issue uh, of facing communities. Um, and Mel sits on it, and he does a great job on it, and I just wanted to say how much I appreciate it, too, because I don't think I would do the job that you do. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, it is it is it's quite taxing in times because the, the provincial federal governments are continually sending down regulations as well, and it just puts on more and more, more cost to the regional district, which is it costs off the taxpayers. Okay, thank you. Uh, any more reports on? Okay, not hearing any. I uh, the mayor's report. I uh, when I try to write a report, my reports are on most of the stuff that's going on. And one of the things that's going on is always seems to be we we always it always comes down to how we're going to deal with our our economy. And based on economy, it's what's going to happen in the future. It's always about future. And then when we deal with uh, our law, the law passed our uh, caribou recovery uh, with the two nations and the and the uh, two uh, governments. So what what we did here is uh, we want to tell our side of the story when we get to the working groups. So right now, with the law being the way it is, we're going to sit and participate in all the working groups that we can to get our opinion. And I believe that's as close to what we're going to get uh, because we did not succeed in getting into the Caribou Recovery Committee, which is a, a strong voice to the four uh, signatories. So uh, it always comes down to that. And then uh, we get the COVID-19 thing. And that's uh, we're going to deal with that in our uh, new business. So. Uh, the CAO and myself have been right, trying to get a letter out, and every time we get a, thinking about it, it changes. So we would, uh, with that, I'm going to continue with uh, our, uh, that if nobody else has a report, we will continue with our agenda. Okay, thank you. So no discussion items, correspondence, anybody see anything in there? Um, yeah, like C1. Okay, C1. Any further items to be uh, withdrawn from the correspondence? Not seeing any. I, you, UBCM Correspondence 2019 Referred Resolutions. Go ahead, Councillor. So this is one of the resolutions that Joe and Ashley put forward at the UBCM about the lack and, and shortage of corners in our area. Um, unfortunately, we never got to it because we were, um, they were way behind on the resolutions and there's so many of them. But I'm really disappointed that they didn't endorse it. Um, I, did, I guess my question is, what is our next steps in order to get this back on the post? Like back on up in front of, and hopefully next to the UBCM we can actually get to it. What do we need to do? Carol? I will look into it. Um, previously, if they didn't endorse it at one meeting, they're, it's pretty slim that they'll endorse it at another. But I'll, I'll look into it and call uh, the UBCM president and find out what we can do next. I think we've missed our deadline now for NCLGA. However, it's unlikely they'll actually have the conference because of COVID-19. So we might have actually a chance to get it on the agenda for if they postpone it for later. I, I think it's still an important um, to put forward. Um, we're still short of partners in the north. And I, when I talked to Joanne and the RCMP, they, it's really tough on them because they're answer time until the corner gets here and the corner doesn't be so far away. And I think if we would have had an opportunity at UBCM to present a resolution and we would have been able to speak to it with the story behind the reason and why we put it forward in the first place, it might have been a, a different outcome. But unfortunately, we never got a chance to do that. So it would just be nice to be able to put it forward again and hopefully we can speak to it. Thank you. And who's the minister ministry that is involved with the, the coroner? Do you have that with you, Carol, on who that might be? Go ahead. I think that's uh, Minister Dix. Okay, thank you. Maybe that's a possibility that we uh, we entertain the thought of uh, seeing or getting a meeting with him to to uh, voice our uh, concern. He's a little busy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
he's the sign language guy that's behind the lady that talks, Bonnie. But anyway, that, that would be one of the avenues I believe we could, uh, could look at <coughs> once everything settles down in the world. So I'll make a resolution to, um, for, to accept C1 to C5. Sorry. All those paper. Information items. Motion to see. Sorry. Discussion. Favor. Okay. Reports to action. <laughs> RA1. Ratification of recommendations for Finance Strategy Committee. Recommendations. I'll make that recommendation to the Council ratify the following motions adopted by the Finance Strategy Committee meeting held February the 10th from A to I. Yes, go ahead. Um, did a letter get sent to change the partner competition? Okay. Carol? Yes, it did. I haven't heard back from them. Okay, thank you. Clay? Uh, in the light of COVID-19, if some of these events are to not go on, we're not going to issue money if, if there's a chance or it could be canceled, right? Carol? Uh, we have to specify we haven't actually um, made a decision like that would have to be a council decision okay I am um, speaking more so to the chainsaw carving event um, if there's travel restrictions still uh, by that time especially international uh, it's it's not that far away when you start thinking about flying from international uh, what is our what's the scheduling for for handing out the money Carol? I believe they pretty much got it now. Okay. They, yeah, they would have to lay out the money in advance for for many of the things that they do. So okay. I think we are a little bit too late. Boat. Okay, any more questions? Just clarification on that comment. Uh, so the Chainsaw Carving has received the grant for 2020? Carol? They, yes, they have. Okay, and so what if the the event doesn't take place? Go ahead, Carol. Um, seeing as they have the money, I guess it's uh, up to their discretion what they do with the money. They always report back. It's a requirement of that grant that they have to report back to council with what they with what they use the money for. So uh, council could make a decision for future years, but for this year, it's probably already spent. Clay. I think they normally spend the, the bulk of money that we um, provide on the logs, which will be good for you know years to come. So it's it's definitely not wasted. I I don't think at all. Ellen, do you have any more on the how they spend their money and prior? Okay. Uh, the, the majority of the money for the Okay. Thank you. Any more discussion? Okay, on the recommendation. All those in favor? Okay, carried. <clears throat> RA2, Northern Development Initiative, Community Hall and Recreation Facilities Fund. I'll make a recommendation that council support the Pine Valley Seniors Association for the application to Northern Development Initiative Trust for the Community Halls and Recreation Facilities Grant for the upgrades to the Seniors Activity Building. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Okay. RA3, Northern Development Initiative Trust, Community Halls and Recreation Facilities Fund. Make that recommendation that Council support the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 258 
for the application to Northern Development Initiative Trust for the Community Holes and Recreation Facilities Grant for the upgrades to the Royal Canadian Legion Building. Discussion? All those in favor? Carry. That's it for that. And uh, did you see no reports for information. New business. We have COVID 19. I would uh, call on Councillor Wark. Thank you. Um, just a couple questions. So there was an uh, announcement today from the province that um, as far as yeah, gatherings, they'd like to cancel all gatherings now that include 50 people. So um, I guess, you know, that's going to more affect what's happening in Shetland. And I see now that the rec center is going to be going ahead and closing the pool in the gym and, and events like that. So that's, that's important. Um, and then also uh, came out today is that there will be a formal announcement um, regarding schools in the province. So I guess we'll find out tomorrow what that will look like. Yes. Yes. Any more on uh on this matter. As I stated uh, prior uh, to us talking about this matter, that we were in the process of writing letters to inform our community that uh, what uh, the staff have put out uh, prior to uh, today was very important to everybody's uh, health, I guess, and uh, uh, mind. It's not going to put anybody's mind at ease, but it's going to put us in the direction of saying that we are uh, still functioning. We still have to do what we do here in Chetwin. Our office will be open to pay bills, and we will have online. If you do have online, you can pay that way and get water and all those things that we uh, do in the community. For people outside that uh, go to our water station, they can still get, is it credits? Water credits they can get there, and I believe if there, if there is something that uh, staff will deal with, with uh, say emergencies, staff will take care of it without coming to council because that's what happens with our uh, our community. If they come to the staff, staff will engage with council, and it'll be done prior if that uh, is what is requ required of our staff. So with all that, and is there any more items that we need on uh, on this? Uh, go ahead, Councillor. I have a question, um, and I'm not sure who I was talking to about. Uh, some communities I know have started a um, support group um, for the seniors and stuff that if they need something, they call the volunteers and they go pick it up and put it at their door. Is that something that the district is looking at doing? Or is there somewhere we can sign up? And be yeah, actually, we're we're uh, starting a list at the front counter, so you could um, call during business hours or email anytime with your name and number if you'd like to be on that volunteer list. So likely, if it at this point we don't know of anybody in town who has COVID nineteen, but if it should progress to the point where people do have needs, we have a volunteer list that would likely be managed through the emergency social services, um, through the uh, emergency operations. And Curtis Redpath, our fire chief, would be the head of that. And he would be directing the ESS group, who would be directing the volunteers. So, okay. yeah. Sorry. Um, so the volunteers, I'm assuming, are going to go through some kind of screening themselves. So like, our questions are something that, you know, they yeah. to. That's right. So depending on what the volunteers did, uh, we do require criminal records checks for uh, people who are in vulnerable situations, unless somebody volunteered to go with someone who already had a criminal records check, then they would be okay in that. Well, I was kind of thinking how it's like, if you've been on a long trip or if you just get back in the country, things like that, right? Yeah, for sure, yeah. Okay. So, any more on uh, this? Uh, I, I was approached by one uh, church member, uh, and he asked me about what was going on with with uh, our uh, community and what we were doing and he was under the same uh, 
stuff that we thought, like yourself, how, how are we gonna help our community? He says he was already in the position that Yes, we are going to go help the elderly. We're going to, if they need uh, stuff, we're going to go do that. So I believe uh, some of the churches are already in that uh, mode. So if <clears throat> right, right now, <clears throat> with the gathering of 50, usually the seniors don't get out anyway to gather except at their, at their, their uh, hall. But there's not 50 of them there to do any. But some that can't get out, uh, the the pastor was already in that mode of, of helping. So I think the community is probably asking questions, but they already have some of the answers for themselves. Okay, are we good? Big. Public questions at this time. Yes. State your name. Mr. Mayor Kelly Smith. Council, yep. um, I've been out at Soto all day. They've shut down, if nobody's heard yet. I'm sure all the other bands will be closing down right quickly too. But some of the questions I'm hearing from the community, not just Soto, but my own family is, and I don't know if you can answer these questions, but is there an emergency plan for when the hospital gets overwhelmed? Like, I, you know, what, and how, are, how is the community gonna find out? If my mom has an emergency at Sorreras Place, am I gonna be able to get her in? Who's making these life and death decisions? Do we know? At this time, <clears throat> for myself, no. Right now, it's, uh, we run on provincial protocol right. and Northern Health protocol. It would be Northern Health's ability to do that. If they're saying they have a plan, then if you're asking the question, which we probably are asking Northern Health, but we don't have that answer for you on, because of the doctors that we have and the nurses, we probably will be having to possibly ask Northern Health what their uh, protocol on this uh, matter is. We, we don't have that answer for you today, Kelly, but once we get it from Northern Health, then we will be publishing it in through all the process. Uh, I believe we have a Facebook, and so does Northern Health. I'm not too sure if you had any, uh, seen any of the Northern Health ones yet. Yeah, I've so, been watching. Yeah. Okay, so you're, we, if you come here to ask us if if we know of them, no, we don't. Okay. Because uh, they, you know, the doctors that we have, we don't have ten doctors. I right? know. So yeah. if one becomes, hopefully we don't get to that point, Kelly, but if one becomes uh, without the protection, doesn't know that he's dealing with COVID, then we've lost that doctor for that period of time. So we don't have that answer for you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have a couple of questions, so if I could, I have four all together, the ones I've heard the most. So does the district have any power to curb hoarding? Maybe this is a question for the chamber talking to businesses in town. I know that uh, during sales, they can put limits on, you know, two packages of toilet paper per person. I would have to ask Carol. Carol? No, um, th that's the purview of each individual business, so we're not allowed to interfere with how they do their business. Understood. I, I didn't think so, but I, I wanted to ask anyways. So then also that leads into my next question as well. A lot of the larger box stores are opening up just for elders for a couple of hours during the day. So I guess that question would also go to the business owners in town and the district really has no influence over that. The only influence we have is a letter uh, because uh, the community as a whole, we all are in the community. So if we have a letter and they, they do their business according to what they have through their, if it's a big box store. I know IGA will have their own on how they deal with uh, these uh, matters. As for us, all we can is uh, uh, be the advocate for, for our citizens to that company. Right, okay, yeah. thank you. And then the last one, I think you kind of answered before I got up here was, uh, every time you go to address the community, something changes. Uh, and I think people just need to hear from leadership 
Yep. It's calm. We got it under control. It's okay. And this is this is the news today. So that was it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Any com any comments? We're good. Okay. Adjournment. Okay. Thank you.